Hi everybody, my name is Alin Tomescu and today I'll be talking about aggregatable subvector commitments for stateless cryptocurrencies. This is joint work with Itai Avram, my collaborator from VMR Research and the Ethereum Foundation team, Vitalik, Justin, Dankrad and Dimitri. Um, the motivation for this work is to scale existing cryptocurrencies by reducing the so-called validation state. So miners rely on this state to validate transactions and blocks. So for example, in an account-based cryptocurrency like Ethereum, each miner stores a vector mapping each user I to their balance and public key. And as miners receive transactions, for example, here I have user one paying user two five dollars, miners check their state to validate the transaction. So in, in particular, miner will check that user one has more than five dollars, and then if that's the case, the miner will update the state, subtracting five dollars from user one and adding five dollars to user two. And this is great, but unfortunately, this validation state can be quite large. So for example, in Ethereum, if you account for the state of smart contracts, we are talking about hundreds of gigabytes. And in systems like Bitcoin, we're talking about gigabytes. And this large state uh, impedes scalability. So for example, if you want to do consensus via sharding, miners often have to switch shards and download the state associated with that shard. So the bigger the state, the longer the download time, the slower the consensus. Uh, Large state is also a barrier to entry for peer-to-peer -peer nodes in the network, because in order for these nodes to uh, validate transactions and blocks, they need the state. Um, so as a result, uh, you want to minimize it so anybody can join and validate. Also, a large state can lead to denial of service attacks because the state is stored on disk. And if there's a denial of service uh, attack vector, then the fact that the state is on disk will make the uh, attack much, much um, uh, more powerful. Um, so in previous work, uh, Chepurnoi, Papaman2, and Jung proposed stateless validation using authenticated data structures such as vector commitments. So the idea is that as before, you have your state consisting of uh, vectors mapping users to their public key imbalance. And what you do now is you authenticate the state using a vector commitment scheme. So I'm going to commit to this vector over here using a VC commit API, and I will get a digest D, which is a succinct representation of the entire vector. So this might be something like 32 bytes. And then I will also get a proof associated with each position in the vector. And now the miner will only store the digest D, but uh, uh, instead of storing the full data, and the users will store their individual proofs. So user I will store pi I, and user I will know that it has a balance uh, of a particular amount. Uh, and now when you have a transaction, again, from user one sending money to user two, you augment it with some additional information. So user one is going to tell the miner its full balance is $65 and it's sending five of those dollars to user two. And it's going to give the miner its proof pi one that its balance is indeed $65. And now what the miner can do, the miner has the digest so he can call this verify po position API to check that uh, user one does have $65. And he inputs the digest and the proof, the position and the amount into the API. And the API tells him, okay, you're good to go. Um, and now the miner can validate the transaction and execute it. And in order to execute the transaction, the miner actually has to update the state. So now there's a new vector, the one above over here, which has uh, updated balances for user one and two. So the miner would have to somehow compute this new digest D prime reflecting the state over here. And the miner, the VC scheme should allow the miner to do this via a update digest API, which takes the previous digest and the position that changed and the amount that it changed by. And here, for example, the digest changed twice because one, user one has $5 less and user two has $5 more. So the API is being called twice. And in addition to that, uh, Remember that we had these proofs, which were valid with respect to Digest D. Unfortunately, now that the Digest is updated, the proofs are invalid, so each user will have to update its own proof. And each user I is able to do that by calling an update proof API, which takes their previous proof by I, and uh, the position that changed in the vector and the amount that it changed by. Once again, two positions have changed in the vector, so each user will have to call this API twice. Okay. Um, and I wanna highlight uh, that the result that you get by calling these update APIs is the same that you would get by committing to this updated vector. But obviously, since the miner only has the digest, we want to go in this direction rather than in this direction above, since we don't have the full state. Um, 
So let me make this a bit more formal by actually talking about the requirements of a VC scheme for stateless validation. So one thing that we need, as we saw, are updatable proofs and updatable digests after any change at position J. And here I want to emphasize that you actually want to be able to do these updates using this so-called uh, auxiliary information, an update key. And you want this auxiliary information to be static, to never change. Um, some schemes do allow for updates using dynamic auxiliary information, uh, what we call update hints. For example, in order to update the digest after position J changed, you would need the proof by J to do so. But this is a bit prob problematic because in a transaction from user I to J, user I must now include not just its proof by I, but also the proof by J. So user I would have to either contact J directly and get the proof from him and then create a transaction, or he would have to talk to some other party. And this is something that we would like to avoid. Therefore, we're uh, specifically interested in schemes that support static update keys rather than dynamic update hints. And this will come throughout uh, in the presentation. Another requirement is we want to be able to aggregate a bunch of proofs into a single subvector proof for many positions. And this is important because a, in, a, in a cryptocurrency, you have many transactions with many proofs. So it would be really nice to, to compress those proofs. Another thing we want is to pre-compute all proofs in the vector fast because we would like to support the so-called proof-serving nodes that help users compute their proofs. And for these nodes, it's very important they be able to compute proofs from scratch periodically. Finally, we want the scheme to be concretely efficient. So we want small proof sizes and fast update times and fast proof computation times. So our contribution in this work is a scheme that uh, meets these requirements, which we call an aggregatable subvector commitment scheme. And we formalize this in the paper and we instantiate it in prime order groups using bilinear maps. And, and to compare our work with previous uh, vector commitments or aggregatable subvector commitments, um, I'm going to use this table here. We're going to look at a bunch of dimensions. And here, keep in mind that n is the size of the vector v being committed to. So uh, Merkle trees are actually a vector commitment scheme. They have constant size public parameters, the description of the collision resistant hash functions you're using. And the proof size in the Merkle tree is logarithmic. And unfortunately, Merkle tree do not support um, updates using static update keys. They do support updates using dynamic update hints. But as we mentioned before, that's not good enough for our use case. Also, they don't support aggregation of proofs. Uh, fortunately, computing all proofs is very fast. Um, so Merkle trees don't really meet our requirements. Then there's a bunch of other schemes from prime order groups using bilinear maps. Um, and these schemes tend to fall into a couple of categories. Uh, they either have larger proof sizes or large update keys, or they don't support aggregation, or they take a long time to compute all proofs. So these schemes don't meet our requirements either. Uh, then there's schemes in hidden order groups, uh, which have the advantage of having constant size public parameters, but have concretely larger proof sizes because they use hidden order groups which have larger group elements. And unfortunately, these schemes also require dynamic update hits, but there are some schemes that require that only need the static update keys like CFG2 here from CFG20, which builds upon a previous line of work by Catalano and Fiore and Lai and Malavolta. And this scheme meets all of our requirements except for concrete efficiency due to the use of hidden order groups. And so in contrast, our scheme meets our requirements and meets our concrete efficiency uh, requirement as well because we use prime order groups. Uh, but it does pay a price uh, for this. So our public parameters are linear sized and we'll talk about this later. And so compared to hidden order groups, I wanna point out a few other limitation our, uh, limitations our work has. So one limitation is trusted setup which we need to compute our public parameters. This fortunately can be done using a decentralized uh, multi-party computation protocol. Also, we don't support incremental aggregation of proofs or disaggregation of proofs, uh, but uh, this is not uh, super important in the stateless cryptocurrency setting. And we don't have space-time trade-offs for pre-computing all proofs, which uh, some schemes support. But again, I don't think this is too important in the stateless cryptocurrency setting. Um, Let's begin by talking a little bit about background and then we'll present our techniques and then we'll, we'll conclude the talk. So we build our scheme on top of Kate, Zaverucha, Goldberg polynomial commitments. So the idea here is that you can commit to any polynomial 
in constant size by first picking some public parameters that look like this, g to the tau to the i, where g is a generator in a, in a prime order group, and tau is a trapdoor in the associated field, and tau should be unknown. So we should find a way to generate these parameters and discard tau after. And once you have these public parameters, you um, have a polynomial phi with coefficients in the field. Let's say the coefficients are phi 0 through phi n, so it has degree less than or equal to n. And you can commit to phi as g to the phi of tau. Uh, the problem is you don't know tau. So the question is, how can you compute g to the phi of tau? And the observation here is that if you have these public parameters and you exponentiate them by the coefficients of the polynomial, you get exactly g to the phi of tau. Um, and a very important property of KZG is, it, is its homomorphism. So for example, if I have two polynomials, phi and psi, and I want to take a, a linear combination of them with coefficients a and b in the field, um, then the commitment to this linear combination, which looks like this, can be obtained by uh, uh, a combination of the commitments to the individual polynomials. So for example, if I expand this expression out a little bit, I get this and this, which are actually the individual commitments. So at the end of the day, I get this. Uh, this is very important, and we'll use this throughout the talk. Uh, in general, we'll be working with a lot of linear combinations of existing uh, commitments. So previous work shows how to build vector commitments from uh, KZG polynomial commitments. And in particular, they use Lagrange polynomials for this. So the idea there is that you represent a vector V with a polynomial phi, where phi of i is equal to VI. So it looks kind of like this, a linear combination of these so-called Lagrange polynomials, which have this form. Um, and if you apply the KZG homomorphism to this equation 6, what you get is that the commitment to phi is basically a linear combination of the commitments to the Lagrange polynomial, which uh, means you can compute the commitment using a multi-exponentiation on these commitments. Uh, so as a result, uh, if you include these commitments in their public parameters, you can commit to vectors very, very fast using a single multi-exponentiation. And I want to point out here that previous work shows how to derive these commitments to the Lagrange polynomials using the, the g to the tau to the i's uh, in a public matter. So the trusted setup can remain simple and only generate these g to the tau to the i's. Now, in order to update the digest in this scheme, you first have to update the polynomial and then update the commitment. So let's say position i changed uh, by delta i. The idea is that I have this old polynomial phi of x, and the updated polynomial will be the old one plus the change at position i, uh, which I'm going to multiply by the Lagrange polynomial. And now if I want to update the commitment, well, all I have to do is apply the homomorphism to this equation 10, and I get this. So as a result, if I have this Li commitment, I can update the digest at position i like this. And so for our purposes, uh, because miners do need to update commitments, we will include this commitment to the Lagrange polynomial in the ith update key associated with position i. Um, Next, I want to talk about how to compute proofs uh, in this vector commitment. The idea is that to prove that the i position is vi, I have to convince you that phi of i is vi, which is the same as saying that phi, of, uh, phi divided by x minus i gives remainder vi. This is the same thing as saying that there's a quotient polynomial uh, equal to phi of x minus vi divided by x minus i. And uh, the proof pi i is just a commitment to this quotient and can be verified using pairings, uh, plugging in the commitment, the value, the proof, and the position that you're verifying the proof at. Uh, if you expand out this equation, you basically get, um, uh, you're basically checking equation 12 at the secret point tau. And that turns out to be enough for security under the strong Diffie-Hellman assumption. All right, so now we can, uh, we've seen how previous vector commitments based on KZG work. Let's see how we take these commitments and we add updatability and aggregation to them and fast proof pre-computation. So first let's talk about updating proofs. Suppose I have a proof pi i and I've changed position i by delta i and I want to update my proof. We know that the updated proof will just be a commitment to a new quotient polynomial with respect to the updated polynomial phi prime. And I know that this updated quotient polynomial should be the updated polynomial phi minus the value at position i, which has been updated, divided by x minus i. And then I can expand out this expression. I can expand phi prime of x 
into phi of x plus the change at i. Um, and then I can rearrange some terms. So this phi i, I can move it here. This delta i stuff, I can factor out delta i, and then I get this term on the right side. And now I observe that, that this guy on the left here is actually the old commitment, the old quotient polynomial qi. And here I have delta i times some polynomial. Uh, therefore, if I apply the KZG homomorphism on equation 19, I get that the updated proof is a commitment to QI prime, which is just a commitment to QI times the commitment to delta I raised, uh, times the commitment to this polynomial raised to delta I. And so as a result, if I want people to be able to update their proofs, I will include this commitment to this polynomial in this update, ith update, key associated with position I. Um, and importantly, in the paper, we show how to derive these commitments from the powers of tau, public parameters, without changing the trust itself. And another uh, case is that I want to update proof pi i, but this time position j different than i has been updated. And I use the same reasoning as before. I have a new proof pi i prime, which has some quotient associated with it, which is the new polynomial minus the, the value at position i divided by x minus i. So remember, value at j changed, but value at i stayed the same. And now I expand out the expression again. The new polynomial is the old one plus the change at position j minus vi. I rearrange some terms as before. And here, once again, I get the old polynomial commitment, qi. And here I have some other polynomial times delta j. And if I apply the KZG homomorphism as before, I get that the, the new proof is the old commitment times a commitment to this polynomial over here, raised to delta j. And now my task is to somehow include these commitments in my update key. But I immediately run into a problem because I notice that if I want to update any pi i after a change to some j, then the UPK, the update key for j, needs to contain these commitments for all i's different than j. So that means that UPKJ will be linear sized, which would not be so good since the, these UPKs have to be included in the transactions with the proofs. Um, and as a solution, we show how to compute this commitment in order one time from uh, uh, constant size information that we include in both UPKI and in UPKJ. And this is perfectly acceptable since when updating proof I, I already have UPKI since I am user I and I'll get UPKJ from the transaction. All right, so let's see how we do this. Um, the idea here is that I can define a polynomial A that has a root at all positions I in the polynomial, in the vector. And then if I look at this uh, polynomial of interest that I'm trying to commit to, I can decompose it as this. And I'm not going to explain how I got this expression, but I refer you to the paper for details. And now I can actually use partial fraction decomposition to rewrite this last part of equation 26. And I can rewrite it as a linear combination of two polynomials. And then if I replace equation uh, 27 into equation 26, well, I get that my polynomial of interest is equal to a linear combination of these two polynomials. Therefore, I can apply the KZG homomorphism once again, and I get that a commitment to my polynomial of interest will be these commitments to these two smaller polynomials raised to these coefficients, everything raised to this uh, uh, one over alpha prime of j, which is the derivative of uh, uh, a uh, evaluated at point j. And as a result, uh, if I include these commitments uh, to a of x divided by x minus i in the ith update key, and I also include this uh, a prime of i, then I am able to, um, to compute this commitment because I get this guy from UP upki and I get this guy from upkj, um, and I'm good to go. Um, and once again, we show how to derive these uh, uh, commitments from the powers of tau without changing the trust itself. Finally, I want to go uh, very quickly over how we aggregate proofs in our construction. The idea is to obtain a single subvector proof given a bunch of individual proofs. And the high-level idea, which is thanks to Justin Drake and uh, Vitalik Buterin, is kind of goes like this. Uh, each individual proof pi i is just a commitment to a quotient of dividing phi by x minus i. And then the subvector proof is a commitment to a different quotient of dividing phi by this product of x minus i. And this is basically a batch proof as referred to by Kate Zavrucha and Goldberg. 
And now I can use partial fraction decomposition to decompose this fraction into a linear combination of these fractions, like this. So I can obtain these coefficients ci. And then if I do the math, I'll notice that qi, the subvector quotient, is equal to a linear combination of the individual proof quotients. And then as a result, I get that the subvector proof is just a multi-exponentiation over the individual proofs with these coefficients ci. So to conclude, uh, what we did here is we proposed a concretely efficient aggregatable subvector commitment scheme from KZG polynomial commitments. And our scheme has constant sized aggregatable and updatable proofs. Uh, this differs from previous constructions in that we support aggregation and updatability. Uh, it has constant size update keys. Once again, uh, this is, uh, differs from previous constructions. And we support pre-computing all proofs in quasi-linear time via the feist kovratovich technique, or FK, which I didn't have time to explain in this talk. Um, other contributions that also have not been included are, first, we give a new security definition for KZG batch proofs uh, in order to prove security of our subvector proofs. And we reduce this to the strong bilinear Diffie-Hellman assumption. Uh, like I said, uh, briefly mentioned before, we find, uh, we, we, we show that th there's a way to derive the update keys from the powers of tau fast. So this keeps our trust, trusted setup simple. It's the same powers of tau trusted setup, for example, used in Zcash. And as a result, it also keeps our public parameters updatable. Uh, because if you change the public parameters, you can rederive all the update keys. Uh, anybody can do so efficiently. Finally, we also address some of the subtleties uh, in VC-based stateless cryptocurrencies. So for example, you have to find a way to keep track of transaction counters, not just the balance of a user. Um, and you need this in order to prevent replay attacks in the cryptocurrency. We also uh, point out that update keys should be verifiable in order to prevent corruption of the digest. And we also um, find ways to um, ameliorate denial of service attacks on new user registration in the system. But for this, I refer you to the paper. And with that, uh, I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you don't want to read the paper, uh, feel free to read our blog post. It basically surveys the paper in a much quicker uh, way. Thank you.